What's that? I said lots of hugs for your players right there. You just so relieved oh. you guys could pull that out. I'm just proud of them. That was really a gutsy, gutsy game. Uh, and their team, too. They played like crazy. And uh, it, was, it was a great football game, and our kids just would not lose. And that, that's what I really appreciate. I thought that's, they just played. When you and Coach Whittingham met after that game, what did you say to each other? Uh, just a good game. Every, you know, everybody knows it was just a real good game. Best of luck next the rest of the way. That's about, that's really all those things most of the time are anyway, but I think everybody was pretty spent. We were, uh, they really do a great job here. It's a great atmosphere. It's a, always a hard-nosed team. And, and we've, we've been in games like this here and lost, so it's great to finally win one. Coach, can you talk about uh, three interceptions the, the defense got? Yeah, I thought, you know, uh, I thought we made some big, probably ended up being the difference in the game was how we played defensively early and then made some key turnovers got the got the ball and uh, and then it was then it was hard you know they had the whole thing rolling he was throwing the ball well they were, they were making catches they were hitting angles they were hitting some fades uh, the screen game was going for him and then the zone read stuff I mean they had it all going on and it was I don't know how many drives in a row they scored on so and we we were having a hard time running the ball. Uh, and so we'd scramble around and find a way to make some plays. And Richie Mullaney, Kevin, all those guys, they all took their turns making plays. It was, it was pretty neat how everybody battled out there, both sides, both teams. Mike, let's talk about the trick play. Sean says that it was an 11th hour change and that uh, quite a few people were surprised when you called it. What was the thinking behind it? And I thought, I th I thought really that was a crunch time in the game, the way they were playing. And I thought if we don't make this first down and we give the ball back to them, we might not see it again. Uh, you know, with, with, a, with a shot at winning the game. So we called the running play first and then we had that timeout. And I thought, nah, let's, let's go for it. And uh, so away we went and uh, the kids executed it real well. Teron is uh, Teron's loving the trick plays. I'm thinking. Yeah. You gotta get him in here sometimes yeah. to talk about all these. Yeah. Things. Well, it's good. The difference between two and one and one and two right now. Talk about that. Well, it's you know it's it's really big. You know, uh, you don't want to fall. It's a it's a chance to build some momentum and confidence, obviously, and you don't want to fall into a hole early. So uh, this win and the other thing is it's just great to win. A, uh, opening conference game. That's that's a positive thing. Maybe this is an indicator of how our conference is going to go this year. It's quite a deal. It's a it's going to be really really competitive and tough. Mike, Storm, and, Storm and Cooks are very very close. Everyone knows about their relationship. Did you expect anyone other than Cooks to be the one that responded when Storm went out and you know caught that touchdown to put you ahead? And just, you know, no, I think everybody. Uh, was I thought, wow, we had lost a lot of, uh, you know, that, that, that understandably so takes the wind out of you. I mean, everybody was worried. And then when, uh, you know, the doctor's trainer and Mariko came over and said that he was re responsive, moving, everybody kind of lightened up, gave him a great applause and uh, just started playing again. And, uh, no, it doesn't surprise me that Brandon stepped up at that point. What was your report on Storm? All I know is that he is, uh, what's the word they, I think the word they used was stable. Uh, and it was very, it was seemed to be a very positive outlook, but I, I, I can't say anything. He'll probably stay here tonight, right? I would say he probably would, but I haven't been told that. Was he not unconscious on the play? I think so. Coach, can you kind of break down in slow motion what's going on when you're in your head when the ball's tipped and then Brandon comes down? Well, you know, I, I it was it was tipped, but it wasn't. That was the intended receiver. That was the intended spot. I thought Brandon responded to it. It just set off its course, not too much, because that's where the ball was going. Huge night from Richie Mullaney. You know, he settles in at that spot. Over yeah. Boom, and comes up with 140 yards. Yeah. He had some huge catches on third down. Cook said that any time he gets a hand on the ball, that the whole team expects he's going to catch it. You guys are <laughs> that's, that's really true about Richie. I think that everybody, they've, they've seen him enough 
for a couple of years in practice to think that he's going to catch all the balls when they come. Yeah, I do. Yeah. You give him a chance. You put the ball somewhere near him, he's going to come up with it. We're going through a crazy game like this, this one specifically. All the ups and downs, the momentum swings. Can you guess how many hairs you might have lost? How many gray hairs you gained tonight? Do you know how many hairs I have left, Steve? <laughs> uh, it, <laughs> I, 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 I would say I'm too old for this, but I'm not going to. It, it was really, actually, it's the time of your life is what it is. I mean, it's awesome. It's, a, it's the greatest feeling in the world. It would have been a hard, hard loss, but it's still, you know, when you've got kids out there playing like that, you can't go wrong. So it's a, just a great experience. You guys lived in here. You were very beat up. You got some more people hurt tonight. So how big is this win in terms of just proving you can do it with some, without that? I told them early in the week, despite everything that's gone on so far, the adversity that we've seen, they, they, we have a team here. I mean, this is a good group of guys, and they're going to work hard, and nobody's going to blink, and everybody's going to bring those other guys along, and and it, it might not always be pretty, but they're going to they're going to keep going. And uh, and and I said that Monday or Tuesday in the team meeting, I said the one thing you guys have to know here is we have a team. This is a good team. Tonight was your first win, Oregon State's first win in Salt Lake since '68, and it was your first overtime win since the 2007 Civil War. Were you aware of either of those things coming into this game? Did you think when you went to Oregon State, you had been in one of the I knew. I've, I've never been here when we've won. I just knew that part of it, and uh, I didn't remember the overtime deal. We lost here in overtime, right? 2000. Yeah, I think so. Something. Mike, the defense, Dylan said uh, whenever you give up 40 plus points, it's, you know, he's not happy. But from your perspective, after they gave him the tying touchdown, get a regulation, the bounce back, and those teams. Yeah, I thought that that, you know, then that's in a game like that, you need just need one stop. You need one stop. And, and uh, that was a great. Yeah, I thought it was a great game. You guys did great. Um, no, you, you know, so you just keep playing. You know, and, and we, like I said, I thought, you know, two of the keys to the game was how we started out defensively early and did a nice job and allowed us to get a lead. And then the, ne the next thing was the turnovers. And then the, the, I guess number three is the stop in overtime, make them kick a field goal so we could win the game. Mike, last year at Arizona, Sean got the ball back with like just over two minutes. You guys were down. You scored to win. This time you scored to tie. You feel the offense is just really confident, Wiccan, and you have so much confidence in him. I do have confidence in him. I, I really do. I, I, uh, you know, it, al it always feels harder than you just described. <laughs> it always does, and uh, it is. Uh, but I do have a lot of confidence in him and, and guys making plays, too. Coach Travis Wilson didn't run as much in the first half as he did in the second half. Now, when those runs first started being really successful, what started going through your mind? Was it like fight or play? Well, it was it was the whole the whole problem with the game was they started getting it all going. You know, him running the ball, him throwing the ball, and they were hitting all different kinds of routes. Their screen game was huge. I mean, they hit. I think, you know, they didn't have a first down, then they hit a screen, and then they then they hit a flare screen later on, two of them for big plays, and then they got the zone read thing going, and I they I mean that's. That was the key to their success, was their, their versatility of all the stuff that they were, they were doing. Mike, that's a career high for Sean, passing yards. How what what is, was it? Uh, 443. Last year you went 433 at Arizona, I think. How much has he improved from a year ago? Oh, I think he's improved a lot. Uh, and mostly it's probably confidence, decision making, that follows right with that. How many hits in the locker room? Six.